Hello guys, welcome back to John HD Gaming and um, in this episode I'm going to showcase my United States um, deck this is a pure US deck um, so I'm going to run you through my selection right now um, we have 34 activation points um, so for my logistics I'm going to bring in the usual FOB I'm going to bring in a CV and two supply vehicles um, I chose not to bring in the um, Super Chinook because I find that nowadays I see a lot of players bringing in a lot of AA and um, if your, your Super Chinook uh, flies anywhere near those AA, you'll get shot down very quickly. So I prefer to use a uh, land-based resupply. I brought this CV in over the M114 A1s um, for the simple reason that uh, this offers a bit more uh, side armor. And I prefer armor over any sort of weaponry uh, because I want my CV to survive and I have no intention of pushing my CVs right into the front lines. Alright, next I'm going to showcase my infantry. Um, I brought in the um, AD Gem squads, the Stinger squads. These guys are fairly standard. For the Stinger AAs, um, I chose them over the um, Red Eyes because um, the Stinger AAs are a little bit more accurate. As you can see over here, they have an accuracy of 11, whereas the Red Eyes have an accuracy of 7. So I want something a little more accurate. I brought in two groups of Marines. Uh, because I want the marines to be able to um, hold like um, places like um, forests and cities. Uh, right, the other thing is um, I choose to use the um, M113A3s as the APC carriers because these guys have the browning guns and uh, can offer a little bit more anti-infantry sort of um, defense. If you would like to have some um, anti-vehicle defense, you want to take the um, dragons. They have some uh, AP power and they are slightly cheaper but I want to have a bit more infantry defense uh, because I think the ADGM squads should be able to hold their own against vehicles and uh, I did the same for the LAD Stingers gave them the same um, browning kind of um, APC Now moving on to our support um, I brought in the Chaparrals, all the Chaparrals I favored the uh, more expensive chaparral because um, the range is significantly higher over the cheaper chaparral. Um, I chose not to bring the Avengers, although you can, because it's a bit more expensive. And I would prefer to um, spread out a larger number of units. So if I take the cheaper chaparrals, I can uh, spread them out a little bit more and um, do more damage to any uh, incoming helicopters or aeroplanes. Now for the tanks. There's a recent patch and um, they have made the Abrams cheaper and for $90 I think um, it is definitely worth the price so I'm bringing in two of them. Um, I chose not to bring in the most expensive M1A1 Abrams because um, from what I can tell the M1A1 Abrams uh, require a fair bit of micromanagement to make use of their excellent stabilizer. The stabilizer means that um, they are able to um, fire very accurately even while moving which means to say that um, you can move towards your enemy and reverse away from them and what this means is that if you can do this consistently your enemy will not be able to get a consistent view of your Abram and they will not be able to target your Abrams accurately while you can get pretty good shots at them Yeah. so if you can do your micros very well and one a one Abrams is the vehicle for you uh, the next thing I've chosen is the MBT-70s uh, because these guys have a pretty decent front armor of 12 it's a bit lacking as compared to the Abrams but still pretty decent and I brought in some um, of these tanks here with a lesser armor um, but they are a bit cheaper I want to give myself a, a little bit more options ranging from the cheaper ones uh, to the more expensive ones uh, these cheaper ones I intend to use them to um, hold the front line while my vehicle squads, which are the ITO squads, um, can do the damage. Um, I chose to bring in uh, mostly uh, the um, these ITOs over here for the simple reason that these guys have very very good AP power and they should be able to deal decent damage even against the famed TADUs. The other one that I brought is the cheaper variants of the M150. These guys are pretty good as well although the AP power is a bit lacking but they are still pretty decent um, the reason I chose this variant is because these guys have a high rate of fire and um, this variant over here 
it offers you some armor all around but I tend to, I tend to find um, my ADGM vehicles as um, pretty much um, throwaway kind of units bring them forward fire as much as they can and um, in most of the in most of the circumstances I find that they usually get destroyed very quickly before um, they use up all their ammunition so um, yeah I would tend to get the cheapest one possible fire all their shots and um, take as many tanks as I can at least um, that's my playstyle if you want to go for a bit more survivability then you might want to go for the um, more expensive um, M901 Aitos alright now for the recon I've chosen to bring in vehicle recon and um, no infantry recon because I do not like their carriers very much the Humvee offers um, very little defense I think um, actually no defense at all and they have no weapons um, I do not favor helicopter transports uh, they are fast but they get shot down very easily and um, they are pretty much uh, not very useful uh, come the uh, so, sort of a uh, late game and uh, in most of the time I see my uh, teammates and friends uh, they are just trying very hard to hide their helicopter transports and trying to get them shot down so as not to give away free points right so I'm bringing the cheaper variants uh, these guys are uh, I would say that they are okay and uh, my main focus is on the optics it is good um, and I think that is um, decent enough for me and uh, they have pretty good uh, infantry defense um, I don't see them as particularly fantastic um, but I would say that I chose them over the Bradley CFVs these Bradley CFVs are, have very good ADGM uh, kind of attack and defense they have very good optics as well however they have very little armor they are armored but very little armor which means to say that um, when they spot a unit for example or spot an AT gem squad they are basically um, gone because um, you cannot you cannot save them you cannot keep them alive so uh, I'm gonna go for the cheaper ones and I think um, for example these um, M113 ACAVs I can bring two of these for the price of one Bradley CAV sorry Bradley CAV so I'll gladly take this choice over the Bradley okay now for the helicopters what I've done is I've chosen the Cobra instead of the other variants uh, the Cobras are the cheaper ones I think sort of middle price um, pretty good anti infantry decent HG power and um, yeah so I think they are pretty good and I'm quite satisfied with um, their sort of um, uh, weapons that they carry uh, what I would recommend is uh, perhaps you might want to consider the Seahawk the Seahawk is pretty awesome uh, in terms of the range I believe they have the uh, longest range against the ground ground units and uh, pretty amazing AP power so if you are confident that your opponent has no or very little AA then you want to spam these guys out and um, take as much advantage as you can but like I said I've always found helicopters to be very situational and um, their effectiveness is pretty much diminished in um, the recent uh, sort of uh, gameplay trends where a lot of AAs are brought in so uh, I'm gonna bring in just one unit in the middle price range kind kind of stuff so as to um, not give away too many points uh, if I encounter a lot of AA now um, I find that the strength of the um, US kind of uh, deck is the planes the downside of these planes is they are very expensive however they are really very good what I've chosen is the Tomcat the Tomcat has very good uh, range against um, aeroplanes um, I believe at 11,900 meters, th that is um, the longest range um, in the game. It is only matched by the um, Soviet MiG-31, so um, I think it's definitely a must-buy. And um, one thing is, these Tomcats, you can only bring in one of them. Um, however, I think they should be able to survive till the end of game if you use them wisely and um, keep them away from the front lines. They should be able to survive. Now I brought in the uh, prowlers. These prowlers are seed aircraft, and uh, what seed means is that uh, you can target um, radi uh, sorry, target the um, radar kind of um, AA. So these guys will be able to take out radar AA effectively, and um, that will be very important in uh, eliminating uh, AAs and getting your helicopters to move in. Now I brought in some uh, cluster bomb uh, kind of planes. Um, these are more of a situational kind of thing or if there's any specific area they want to push in right the downside of it I find is that um, I can only call it one of them 
that is something which I find a pity. But I prefer to go for stuff uh, with, with high rate of fire, with uh, long range, or with um, decent kind of uh, ECM. Because these kind of countermeasures can keep your planes um, alive a bit longer. And um, having a longer range, keeping your planes away from the front lines, away from AA, combined with exceptional ECM, will definitely keep your planes um, alive as long as you do not use them recklessly. Yeah, so um, that's about it. Uh, like I've said, the strength of the uh, US deck lies in your planes. Um, I'm, I, in my deck, my strategy is to use the um, Ito vehicles as the main kind of um, uh, weapon for me to punch through enemy lines, while my tanks are meant to hold the lines and allow my Itos to uh, deal damage. I find the recon a little lacking, um, although I think they should suffice in most circumstances. I'm happy with the Chaparrals, um, I find the Chaparrals pretty decent as long as they get good supplies, and I like the um, effectiveness of the uh, US Marines. Alright, so in my case I have one more point and I guess um, I might want to bring in another group of infantry. And here I'd like to bring in another group of um, AD GM squads. So I'm gonna bring in one more. Um, hardened ones. The one I brought earlier is a train is a group of trained ones. I like to bring in a lot of AD gems uh, because um, as a NATO player You'll find that the pack side, they would like to bring in a lot of um, heavy tanks such as the T-80Us, the T-64s and you would need 80 gems uh, to survive. So yep, that is my recommendation for the US deck. Um, hope this helps you out in your creation of your own deck. And uh, yeah, so um, that's about it. I'm going to save this deck and I'm going to try it out in uh, one of the gameplays. So um, do look forward to that. And uh, if you do like this video, don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more. Alright, so see you guys. Signing off.